So I'm, I'm going to read from uh, my play Refuge. Uh, for the last three years, uh, I've been immersed in researching about our border, uh, going down to the border as part of that. Uh, the play is very much an examination of our literal borders as well as the borders we carry within ourselves, in our bodies, in our cultures, in our religions, um, and, and what those are, and how you might even be a citizen in this country but still feel unwelcomed because of who you are. Um, the play is called Refuge. It follows a South Texas rancher who finds an undocumented migrant from Honduras passed out on his land, a Latina border patrol agent who's trying to find someone lost in the desert, and the animals who are just trying to survive as uh, everything is illegal in the desert. The desert doesn't discriminate between young and old, citizen or documented, uh, or young, or alive or dead. Uh, as part of the play, the animals are represented through puppetry. You are uh, able to see their little strings when you don't see the strings on the humans, but it is in conversation with those strings on us that we don't see but affect us every day. So I'm just going to read three scenes. They aren't uh, consecutive, so there's time between them. And the first one is how the play starts. Desert. Brush. The shank of the night. Stars shine everywhere. There's no artificial light blocking them out. The North Star is among them, pointing to the visible Big Dipper if you're looking for it, or happen to catch a passing glance. The sky is massive, expansive, going for miles and miles and miles with no civilization in any direction. Just brush and palo verde and creosote and mesquite whose thorns reach for blood. We're very much in the South Texas Plains. A saguaro cactus, three feet tall, still early in its life, lies on its side. Something has disturbed it, uprooted it, killed it. An old dog, Steph, approaches the saguaro, limping, an injury from years before. She doesn't let it slow her down. Age is what slows her down. She's a pit, loyal and gentle, unless you're not loyal. She circles the saguaro, inspecting it, until she stops and whimpers briefly. She lies down, sad, never breaking eye contact with the saguaro. She extends a paw, softly touching the cactus, and begins to stroke it, comforting her companion in its final moments. We linger in this strange moment, staying with these two old friends, the dog, morning one, becoming part of the bones of the desert, the other soon to become bones of the desert. Time passes, the moon shifts, the earth moves, and then Steph takes off running and barking. If, we, if this were suburbia, she'd be waking up the neighborhood, but there isn't anyone around to wake up except the anguish of the desert. We're left in stillness for a moment, as we begin to hear what life there is. The insects, the kangaroo rats, the tarantulas, the red ants moving about, the diamondback rattler slithering, and a distant wolf howling. A black ironwood reaching for the heavens, having lived for 2,000 years but been dead for 500. A woman is slumped naked beneath it, her skin has become leather, her eyes sunburnt. Her breasts are breaking open like a fissure in the earth, her body being the earth. She probably stopped here hoping for shade. There are no shoes on her feet or around. Her clothes are neatly folded next to her. Weird. And maybe now we notice the belt swaying in the tree. This woman was about to hang herself. She was out of hope but wasn't able to finish the act, dying before she could do it by her choice, if killing yourself in delirium is a choice. A vulture swoops down, starting to peck at her face, her eyes, when a wolf rushes on, gray, his ribs visible, jutting at the sides, oddly much like this dead woman. He once felt like the size of a bear, but now might be mistaken for a fox, because he's starving. The wolf growls at the vulture, snapping at it, 
He still has a bike when he needs. The vulture can tell, so swoops away, knowing it'll have to find somewhere else to eat or wait the wolf out. The wolf approaches the dead woman, this nameless body in his kingdom. He lets out a loud howl. The wolf heads for one of her legs at the thigh, approaching it with reverence, and then he sinks his teeth into it, gnawing through. It takes a while, seeming as if it won't end until suddenly the leg is freed from the body. The wolf takes the leg and begins to eat. Elsewhere, a dust-covered giant blue 55-gallon barrel, Agua, written across it. And then, just above those words, someone else has written, Viva Trump. There's a blue flag, shredded by time, stuck high on top of the barrel, so someone could see it a ways away. Martina, an eight and a half month pregnant border patrol agent, comes on, still cutting, tracking footprints, the hither, thither, the upturned pebbles. She sees the 55 gallon barrel and stops. This isn't what she was expecting to find, and it means something deeply to her. And she's not happy about whoever has vandalized the barrel with Viva Trump. She sees something sticking to the barrel. She wipes dust away, and we discover a bumper sticker with the image of the Big Dipper. Martina takes a moment. When the wolf appears, staying at a distance, Martina senses someone. Something is watching her, and when she looks over, she sees the wolf, sees what no one else believes is out here. They stare at one another, and Martina can tell, can tell he's real, can tell it's a need, hurting. Martina slowly moves her arm, her hand, not wanting to do anything sudden. It looks like she's heading for her gun. But we realize she isn't, and is reaching for her canteen. She takes her canteen out and gently unscrews the top. She pours some water onto the ground. And the wolf quickly pounces, going for the water. It would be startling if we didn't understand he's only going for water. Martina pours what little is left out. She's drank most of it. But the wolf doesn't care, lapping it up, trying to get it all. Martina watches a moment as the wolf gives her no mind. And Martina takes out the rest of the Snickers bar she's been eating, taking it out of the wrapper and placing it on the ground. But the wolf is too focused on trying to get all the water that he doesn't notice. Martina takes one last look at the wolf, at the wolf attempting to drink, and then she keeps cutting and is gone. When the wolf notices the Snickers bar, he looks back off at Martina and then back to the Snickers and in one gulp swallows it, trying to satisfy hunger. Thank you. <laughs>